Hey, it's LSFT here today, and before I start on today's video, I would like to introduce our new Instagram account, at LSFT videos. You can see some daily updates on my Annex 450H+, which may not be shown on any future videos, and you can reach out to me directly via direct messaging on Instagram if you have any questions. And now, let's start with today's video. Hey, it's LSFT here today, and today we're here to add a trickle charger to the NX 450H Plus. And the reason why you will ask, why am I installing a trickle charger? Well, a few days ago when it was minus 20 something degrees, I was able to drive the car. But the next day, when I tried to enter the car, I was able to enter the back door. But after that, my front door was not able to open. It cannot unlock, it cannot start. So I had to go and use the manual entries and then figured out that the 12 volt battery died. Well, it didn't really die, but it went out of juice. And some of you may say, oh, then that is crappy, right? Definitely crappy. But the reason why is I actually drive very short distances. Like even if you had an ICE vehicle or any vehicle, if you should only drive less than one kilometer after you start your vehicle and over time, it will actually lose charge. So in this video, I'm going to be installing this Nikko 5 Gen Genius into the 12 volt battery so that I can actually trickle charge it once in, a once in a while so that it will actually be fully charged and I won't have this issue going forward. So I'm not new to trickle chargers because my Lexus CT also have the same problem because when I was waiting for my NX 450H Plus, I came and used my Lexus CT to go to the gym and do short distances as well. And there was one day where the battery decided to go on the CT as well. So I went and bought this Moto Power uh, char battery charger maintainer, and it was not too expensive. It was it's right now $25 and it's a $2 coupon. But one thing that I've noticed is it's only an 800 milliamp uh, charger. Definitely you can buy faster ones. So if you go here and look at these, these actually go up to like 1.5 amps and it can go to like a two amp and you can also get to a four amp. So there are different types that you can buy and you can see that it also comes with um, one that you can actually go and install and not have to use the clamps to uh, charge it, use the charger. So again, I think this is all up to what you want. This charger is actually not too bad. I would say it's, I'm quite pleased for the Lexus CT to use this one. However, when I was actually looking at for my NX, I was thinking, well, this one probably is still good, but I'm driving the car more often than the CT. So do I need a faster one? Four amps seems to be okay. 43 bucks, not too bad. So I went with this NOCO Genius 5. They do have smaller ones, but this one's a 5 amp charger. So it's even more than the 4 amp of the other brand. But you can see the price is more than double. So you may think, yeah, maybe this one's too expensive. But I, I really want to have something more reliable. I wouldn't say that the modal power is not reliable. I've actually been using it on my other vehicle. But I'm just thinking, this makes me feel better. I don't know. You may think that it's a waste of money, but I'm no expert on trickle chargers. And I just pick based on, okay, on experience and really based on the ratings. This has 13,528 ratings, and it's actually 4.5 stars, which is not bad. So a lot of people are liking this one as well. But again, the modal power is the same, but it has less. It has 7,000, almost 8,000 ratings, and the ratings are quite similar. It's a little bit less than this NoCo one, but I think they both will work. It just depends on what, which one you feel more comfortable with. All right, so I've already opened the box, so I'm not going to do any unboxing. I actually opened it up and did some things to it already, so I'm just going to take it out and see what needs to be done, right? So here we have the trickle charger, 
I actually went and removed the clamps because one thing I want to do is install it permanently so I don't have to go and open the trunk every single time I want to do a charge. So there's the two clamps. So we have the base adapter. This is the plug that we'll plug in. And we have an easy install adapter. And this, what this does is I can easily put this together and then it will do the connection. And when I remove the clamps, I actually have these two rings. So what you need to do is install this into the battery so that it will always have it connected. Once that's connected, all you need to do is connect this with the adapter and then it will trickle charge. So what you need to do is open the back cover. There's a lever here, you can pull, you pull up, and it will open and you would see that the 12 volt battery is right there. So what you need to do is look for where they have a nut. So once you have that nut, you unscrew the nut and then you connect the connector to it. Sorry for the rattle, but you can see I have these two. So the black will go to the black and the red will go to the plus. All right. So I'm going to now connect it and then we can go on from there. So the standard eyelet on the Genius 5 was a M6 uh, size, which didn't fit the battery. So I had to go and buy this M10, which actually would fit the battery. If there was an M8, which I don't think there is, then that would have been better. But again, that's another $20 uh, to get this accessory. So when you think of it, probably the Moto Power was probably the better deal, right? Because this cable has our, is probably the half the price of the 4 amp Moto Power one. It is what it is. You bought it, you have to continue to invest in it. So these cables aren't actually useless. You can actually use it for another vehicle and because you can always take the, the trickle charger and use the clips on another vehicle and plug it in to be used. So it's only that the cable that I had to buy well, did not fit the the screws and I had to find a bigger one. It's quite unfortunate, but it is what it is. So originally cable, when I actually took out the clamp, there is this M6 like, uh, hole here, which is not enough for me to put it into the screw. So what I needed to do was go and get a different accessory. This one is the M10, which is a little bit bigger. It's actually much bigger. And you can see that now it will fit right into this hole. It seems a bit bigger. I believe if you can get the M8, it would actually probably fit much better. But with an M10, it shouldn't be a problem in this situation. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to install it and then we'll see how things go. All right. So ideally what I'm looking at is the black and the red will follow the lines. And you would notice here that it actually is bent down this, this way. So it's actually supposed to fit this way down. All right. So let's put it in and then we'll go from there. Alright, so now I've actually installed 
the black cable. Now to install the red. So after it's installed, you can now see that I have the black with the negative and the red with the positive. And I have the fuse that's hidden there and I'll have a cable that will come out. And that's where I will plug in the Genius 5. So that's where that will plug in and then plug into the socket. So now let me cover this all back up and let's see if it works or not. So now you see that this is now covered. This is for safety reasons to cover the positive and it, it's, you need a little nudge to push it back in because of the clamp already embulging a little bit. But let's see how this all turns out. So I wired it and I actually now have it sticking out from the Pioneer speaker. So there's a little edge here where I can actually have the cable sticked out here, which is quite convenient because I can just hide it into that little area when it's not in use. All right, so now it's time to plug it in. So you can see that I've already plugged it into the Genius 5 and you can see that it has a power light. So now the verdict is plugging this in to the socket. Okay, so this can only be plugged in one way, so you wouldn't be a problem. So one thing I'll probably do before I do that is to cover this up. Okay, so this is all covered up now. So now let's plug this in and see if it actually works or not. So now that's plugged in. So let's press this. So now I've successfully connected it and you can see that it's actually about 25% full. So it does need a charge. So I'm going to let it charge and let's see how long it does it take to actually get it completed. After fully charging the vehicle and I used it for one week. And when I plugged it in the next week, you can see here, it actually dropped to drop one level, which means it's about 75% of charge, which means you can see that having such short distances, this actually may cause the battery to slowly drain. And if I actually went and did a longer drive, it probably would actually charge up and then slowly, gradually over time that the battery capacity will drop to a point where when it gets too cold, it will drop beyond the point where it can actually start your vehicle. So that is why it's important to maintain that 12 volt battery, especially when you are actually using a plug-in hybrid, because these new cars nowadays connects to the internet, the headlights are on, when you approach it, it turns on the lights, when you unlock it, the lights are turned on. There's so many things that uses this 12 volt battery and it's important to maintain it. All right, so I put a battery tester into the 12 volt and when I'm putting it into drive, it shows 14.1, 1409 volts. But when I put it into park, it actually drops down to 12.01 or whatever voltage. And then the tester says it's actually weak. So I don't know what it is, but that's what the output is. 
So next time I'm going to try is I'll fully charge it and see is it the same behavior. So after charging overnight, now you can see here it actually is pulsing the green, which means it is now in maintainer mode, which is which really means that it's now fully charged. All right, so now it's fully charged, and when the car is now in EV mode, it's in ready. I don't have the air conditioning or anything on. It's 14.15. Now let me put it into drive, and it's still 14.15. I'll put it into reverse, it's also 14.5. So when the battery is good, fully charged, it does give quite a good number, 14.15 volts. So now we're going back to park, I get 14.15. So now let me turn on the air conditioning. The heat pump's now turning on, and it's still 14.12, so it seems to be doing quite well. Let me turn on the headlights. Now it's 14.0. It dropped a bit and come back up. Turn off the headlights. 14.12. So it seems to be great. So when it's fully charged, it does not have that behavior where I put it into drive, it drops to 412. So one of my viewers actually said that maybe we should just let the car run for an hour and hopefully that will recharge the 12 volt battery. And that is possible. I would say that is one way to not install a trickle charger and you would still be able to charge the car when you need to. because. For my case, if I drove only like less than a kilometer, I get home, and because I have a plug-in hybrid, the engine doesn't really start. So I can just leave the car running in my garage, and it will actually automatically turn off when you say yes to this screen, and it will continue to run until one hour later and automatically turn off. That is definitely one way to do it. But I don't know how effective it is, and I don't know how much it would actually charge. One thing that you probably want to do is turn your auto uh, headlights to really the daytime running lights, so that it doesn't go and use all the juice while the vehicle is running, and that probably will be fine. But if the weather is extremely cold outside and your garage is still minus 10 degrees, you now have to be careful of the gas engine starting. So it is critical to know what the condition of, it, of the weather is and is that something that you want to do. So I gave it a try and from 53 kilometers distance to empty, after one hour it actually got to 51 kilometers. So we used two kilometers of EV range to attempt to char recharge the vehicle. So I think that probably could be one option for many people who probably do have a garage and if the weather is good you don't need to have the gas engine to start and that should be able to charge up your 12 volt battery. There are definitely other options. Lexus actually has Lexus Comfort Plus Accessory Suite and I believe this is probably sold in US as well. In Canada definitely I've seen it but I don't know if it's ready for the plug-in hybrid but under the hybrid 350H it is an accessory that you can put in. What it is is there's a block engine heater, a cabin warmer, trickle charger, and a Bluetooth hub. What this does is that you can set this all up and it gives you some convenience where you can use a, your Bluetooth app to set schedules to actually when to warm up the cabin using a very efficient heater, when to warm up your engine block because if you're in extreme cold weather, this is very useful for you to be able to start up your engine. For hybrids, for plug-in hybrids, it may not be as easy. But you can see that here, it actually has a very easy socket to allow you to plug in the plug into a 12, 12 a 120 volt uh, socket at home. So then it's not like you have to wrap it around or put it through the door and open your window and put the wire through. It's much easier, it's more clean. And it looks nice. However, it's not cheap. 
overall, it could range from $1,000 for the whole set. Uh, the trickle charger itself is roughly $500 to $600, depending on where you buy it. Um, if you go and look at Toyota, it actually is much cheaper. So that could be one option. I haven't done a lot, a lot of research, so I don't know if this will work for the plug-in hybrid, but definitely I know the, some of the NX models, this is something that you can put in. But again, it's $1,000 for the full set. Even the trickle charger going to the dealership, it's probably gonna be $500 or 600, plus taxes and all that. It's way more expensive than the NOCO trickle charger, which we felt already more expensive than the motor power. So this is OEM standards, and this is probably a very good option for people who want to use original parts and all that. And this could help you maintain, keep your car warm in the winter and be able to m make sure that everything will work properly. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please comment, like, and share this video. If you'd like to see more videos like this, you can subscribe to my channel and press that alert button to get notified when new videos are posted. If you'd like to support the channel, you can definitely provide a super thanks. I'll see you guys again next time in the next video.